say hello to one 2.1, your free ticket to high-end AI videos. It fortlessly transforms text into stunning videos while bringing images to life with seamless motion. <laughs> Hey, what's up? This is Jal from Jal's AI Show and welcome back to another very exciting AI tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll guide you through installing and running one 2.1 using ConfUI. We'll break down all the available diffusion models and help you pick the perfect match for your GPU. I'll explain the key differences in quality, speed, and VRAM requirements. So by the end, you'll know exactly which model delivers the best results for your setup. We'll cover the optimal settings for best results and I'll share specialized techniques to optimize performance, especially for low VRAM systems. If you don't already have ConfUI installed, I recommend checking out my setup guide first. Link in the description. Also note that all the resources and download links mentioned in this video will also be available below. So without any further ado, let's get started. First things first, grab the text to video workflow. Ensure you're running the latest ConfUI version. Head over to your ConfUI manager and hit update all. Head to the nodes manager and look for the ConfUI GGUF in the video helper suit nodes. Just to make sure you can check for missing custom nodes and install them if any appears and restart your Comfy UI. Now it's time to choose your text encoder. You've got two great options. Go with FP16 for maximum accuracy in your prompts or FP8 for faster speeds with just a tiny trade-off in precision. Personally, I find FP8 works perfectly fine for most cases. The difference is barely noticeable. So that's what I'll use today. But feel free to test both and see which one suits your needs best. Save it into your ConfUI model's text encoders. Next, grab the VAE model from this page and drop it into your ConfUI model's VAE. Now, let's pick your diffusion model. If you're under 24 gigs of VRAM, skip the 14B BF16 versions. They're too heavy and both support 480p and 720p resolutions. If you're on 8 gigs VRAM, stick with 1.3B FP16 for stability and it supports 480p only. And for those with 12 gigs VRAM, the 14B 720p FP8 is a solid choice but with some tweaks in the settings that we'll cover later. However, if you're working with even lower VRAM for image to video generation, you've got an extra option. Try experimenting with 480p models. But here's my top recommendations. Go for a quantized version, it's faster, way easier on your VRAM, and in my tests, the quality difference is completely negligible. Seriously, the speed boost alone makes it worth it. There's three GGUF links. One for text to video, the other for image to video 480p, and the last for image to video 720p. Same rules we discussed earlier still apply for these different versions. But now with even less VRAM usage and faster speeds. And don't forget there's always a tiny quality trade-off. The lower the Q value, the lower quality and faster speed. And vice versa. After all, nobody knows your GPU's power better than you do. If you're chasing the absolute best quality and don't mind waiting a bit longer, go for the full precision models. But if speed and efficiency are your priorities, the quantized version is a fantastic choice. Maybe you're somewhere in between. Don't stress too much. You can always switch later and compare the results yourself. If you choose full precision model, save it under ConfUI models diffusion models, but if you went for a quantized version, save it under ConfUI models UNet. And don't worry, I'll leave a workflow for each version. Now a one model. I'll start with the 1.3B FP16 version. For the text encoder, I'll stick with the FP8 precision to show you what it can do. 
Next up, the prompt box. This is where you describe exactly what you want in your AI generated video. Make sure to provide a detailed description of the scene, including the composition, the motion, and the camera movement. Below that, you'll see the negative prompt box. Since one is a Chinese model, these default keywords are already in Chinese. They help filter out common issues like blurriness, noise, artifacts, and distortions. I trust the model provider made the right choices here, so we'll keep these settings as they are. Alright, let's move on. The next step is the most important part. First, smaller video dimensions means faster processing but lower quality. Ideally, you'd want maximum resolution and duration, but there's always a trade-off. High resolutions demand significantly more computing resources. I've picked these standard sizes for you guys. Those are optimized for the one models to give you the sharpest details without artifacts. Stick to these dimensions and you'll avoid 90% of rookie mistakes. And of course you can play with the video length here. This represents the number of frames. You can change the FPS from the video combine node. I recommend two options. 16 FPS faster to generate but less smooth. Or 24 FPS slower but way smoother. But the smart way to handle FPS is to generate your video at fast 16 FPS first, then use Topaz Video AI's frame interpolation to instantly fill the missing frames. I'll show you that later. So to determine the length in seconds, you only have to apply this formula. The number of seconds multiplied by the FPS plus 1. Alright, you don't have to do that. Here's your no stress FPS guide. If you need longer videos, make them smaller. If you want higher quality, keep them short. It's all about finding the right balance for your specific hardware. There's something very important that I noticed in my tests. When you describe a slow, detailed action, but you set the duration too short, like 1 or 2 seconds, the model will try to create the entire motion in that tiny time frame. The results glitchy and natural movements. Here's an example. Imagine this scene. A hero leaps from a speeding train, lands in a roll and unloads his firearm in one fluid motion. But you only give the AI 2 seconds. The model freaks out, the muzzle flashes appear before the gun raises, the jump looks like he's teleporting, a lot of glitches and unnatural movements. So it's not just about picking settings your GPU can handle. Sure, you can reduce frames and extend later, but if your prompt doesn't match your duration, it won't work good for you. Now let's look at the K sampler node. More steps means better quality, but take longer. For text to video, I usually use between 10 to 30 steps. The CFG scale controls how closely the AI follows your prompt. You can increase it, but don't go too high. I recommend keeping it between 4 and 7. The default sampler and scheduler work fine. But I tried a DPM++ with a Keras scheduler. It was so bad. I'm still testing these options, but for now, we'll stick with the defaults. Moving to the video combine node. Lower CRF means better quality but bigger files. I usually set this to 19. Now we're ready to generate, just click the Q button. These results only took 2 minutes to render. And honestly, those are not great. So let's switch to an FP8 model and see what's gonna happen. And look at these improvements. That's really impressive. Now let's explore what I consider the most impressive feature of this model, image to video. Drag the workflow into ComfyY canvas and let's try to use a GGUF model. For that, we'll grab a UNet loader instead of the Load Diffusion Model node and load our GGUF. Connect the pipelines, load your source image, and replace the default prompt with one matching your picture. The prompting approach here differs from text to video. You only have to focus on describing movement and transformation rather than the entire scene setup. For dimensions, we'll bring the image size node 
it will adjust dimensions from your original image, while maintaining the same aspect ratio. We'll use 33 frames for about 2 seconds of footage. After about 12 minutes, success. The results are genuinely impressive, holding their own against much more expensive solutions. For those with less powerful GPUs, you can try the 480p model at 832x480 resolution. Those are some results from different settings that I've tried. Different scenes, models, and durations. Here's how they perform on my 12 gigs GPU and exactly how long each one took to render. Here's my typical workflow for best results. I first generate videos at medium resolution, then enhance them using Topaz Video AI. The process is simple, just drag and drop your output file right here and click start editing. For upscaling, I recommend trying a 2 times resolution increase first. While there are several AI models available, I found the Protus model delivers the most consistent result across different types of content. Since we're working with 16 FPS footage, you'll want to enable frame interpolation to smooth out the motion. Bump the output frame up to 24 FPS and this will make your video much more fluid. When you're ready, hit quick export to save the enhanced video back to your original folder. The processing is surprisingly fast and you'll immediately see the improvement, crisper details from the upscaling and buttery smooth motion from the frame interpolation. This two steps approach gives me the best balance between generation speed and final quality, especially when working with longer clips. I want to create an ultimate benchmark guide to help you choose the perfect model for your GPU. But here's the thing, I can't do it alone. Since I only have one GPU to test with, I need your help to gather real-world data. Here's how you can contribute. Comment your GPU model, your one model, and how long the generation took. With your input, I'll compile all the data into an easy-to-follow benchmark file that I'll add to the description. This way, you'll know exactly which model runs best on your hardware. Because the best model isn't universal, it depends on your setup. Your feedback could save others hours of trial and error, so drop those details below. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and check out my Patreon to support the channel. See you in the next one.